Hello, everybody. Hello. We, we are about to begin. Who loves Zoom? I feel like we're back in back in the days of yore when we were all stuck on Zoom forever. Um, it is approximately 1.30 Eastern time here in Miami, Florida. For those that are joining us from wherever since we're on Zoom, welcome, welcome. We're super excited for this amazing program. Um, I want to give a big shout out to our behind the scenes, Laura Guerrero. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yep. Laura, do you mind pinning me? So um, folks know, as everyone's kind of zooming in, we have a lot of screens here. So those that know, um, I will, I'm speaking. Nice. And then um, I will be introducing Brainerd quickly. So quickly, uh, my name is Esther Park, and I am the Vice President of Programming here at Ulite Arts. So excited for this new program. Um, we are launching with Brainerd Kari um, called Skills Decoding Dollars. So um, this is our ongoing uh, professional development program called Skills. Um, particularly this one is all about grant writing, which I'm sure everyone loves grant writing, right? No, I'm sure it's, 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 it's a sore topic for many, but it is definitely something that we all need to learn and love. And so um, this is one of four sessions. Uh, we are kicking it off this Friday and then all the rest remaining Fridays are available. Um, the first is this introduction that kind of talks about the overview of the four sessions. And then um, the next three sessions, what's unique is um, we are requesting our participants to submit a $50 refundable deposit. So we understand that if you do all three sessions, you will get your $50 deposit back to show your commitment to um, this program, the session. And if, everyone if that, sorry, will... sorry to interrupt. If the grant is when the grant is submitted, they get their fifty dollars back. Oh, okay, got Thank it. You. Um, so, so with that being said, uh, I wanted to quickly introduce our speaker and leader of this amazing session. Uh, Brainard Carey is an artist and frequent lecturer on professional development for artists. He is the director of Praxis Center for Aesthetics, an online career development and support center for artists that provides educational materials as well as a community for artists and regularly brings in experts to talk about a variety of issues crucial to the development of an artist. Praxis Center also has ongoing list of artist resources, including grants, exhibition opportunities, and more. As a working artist, he collaborates with his wife, Delia Carey, under the name Praxis. Their work has been exhibited in the Whitney Museum of American Art, MoMA, and other venues around the world. He has written six books for artists. He also co-authors other books with his wife, who is co-founder and co-director of Praxis. And he is Zooming live from New York City. So without further ado, I am going to hand it off to Brainerd. So everyone on the chat, give your emojis, mm -hmm. fires, symbols, thumbs up. We're ready for you. Okay, let's see. I'm going to begin by um, sharing my screen just so, um, yeah, we have that down. Uh, okay, here we are. And I think you can also just to get this the technical part there and you can also see me in the corner here or something right can you still see me yeah okay um screen looks good okay great um thanks everybody for coming yeah um that's who i am and and and, and, and roughly what i do i i also interview artists for yale university radio that was a kind of personal pet project it was the way i um ended up meeting a lot of people uh well I'll, I'll tell you the, the the short story because it's become a big part of my life and it's and it's really just a pet project it's not something i get paid for when i was in a big show um at the whitney biennial i was trying to make connections everywhere and 
um, you know, I was at one of these dinners where, you know, uh, there's a curator there and I'm thinking, wow, you know, this is great. She's from the new museum. I met her. And, um, and so then after the dinner, I, um, I, I called the new museum and I said, hi, you know, can I speak with Anne? And so her, her secretary, you know, picked up and, um, I said, can I speak with Anne? And she said, sure. Um, hold on one minute. Who's calling? Brainerd. Okay, one second. And then um, comes back. Hi, sorry, uh, Anne's in a meeting. Um, uh, you could try another time. I said, okay. So then I tried again and again and again. And I kept getting, sorry, Anne's in a meeting. And I thought, what is going on? <laughs> like, you know, aren't I this person that people want to talk to? I was in this show. And so I was really kind of, flummoxed right and then um i did something very bold i said uh the next time i called because i feel like i had nothing to lose she obviously wasn't going to pick up the phone i called again i said um can i speak with ann who's calling i said it's the new york times for a possible interview oh hold on one second she was on the phone like that so then i said hey ann it's Brainerd. i i'm trying to reach you oh sorry 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 i've been so busy but well, I wouldn't advocate that. What what it taught me was you can get to everybody through through asking for an interview. Everybody wants to talk about themselves, apparently, and um, and this is something consistent enough that I set up a, a kind of program, uh, very simple online recording people, that's just you know audio based phone, and I began inviting people, directors of museums. That was the, some of the first people I invited, the director of major museums, who said yes right away. I was stunned and um and i began asking them all the questions i wanted to ask how do you find artists how do they get into there what presentations work what presentations don't work it was amazing um and so since then that was uh about seven years ago i've consistently done that and i've interviewed over 1600 artists and curators it's a lot of artists and curators, right? So um, so I've learned a lot. I'm just telling you, I learned a lot from that. And it's just something that you know anybody could do. You could interview people. I did it just for my own, but it, it opened up just a wealth of knowledge. And that's uh, often what I'm pulling from in, in much of what I'm doing here. So, okay, today is this kind of introductory talk about the Pollock Krasner um, Foundation. If you're watching this as a recording, it will go through the very important process of uh, of applying and also what uh, a couple of winning applications look like. I'm going to show you winning applications. Uh, before I, I start going through the slides, I wanna say that there's a few different kinds of grants for those who, who don't know. There's, um, there's merit-based grants, there's need-based grants, there's organization grants, individual grants, and then there's nominated grants. Nominated grants means um, you have to be selected. There isn't, there's sometimes an applying process after that, but you have to be selected for it. It's not something you can apply to. Um, then there's organization grants, of which there are many. Um, as an artist, typically you can apply for an organization grant unless you use a conduit um, from another organization. And what that means is you can't apply for an organization grant as an individual. However, if you're applying as an individual through another organization, you can apply for that grant. Um, so let's say you're an artist, you, you want to do a specific project. Another organization that is a nonprofit could be something like local church. Um, any nonprofit that you know that would work with you. And what that means is um, that if, let's say your local church wanted to work with you, that means you're saying, look, I wanna do a public project. I'm trying to get grants to, to build this public bench that I have permission for, but not the money. Um, if you allow me to use your name, the church will appear as someone who's, who is an organization trying to, you know, help an artist, fund an artist, and I'll give you 7% of the grant that comes in. This is typical, right? Um, that's how you work through an organization to get it to an organizational grant. It's called a fiscal sponsor. Uh, the church isn't sponsoring you, right? Um, 
but they're 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 sponsoring you in, in terms of they're not sponsoring you in terms of cash, but they're sponsoring you by um by saying that you know we're we're promoting this artist where this is what this is our artist and our project um i keep using that example of the church but it doesn't have to be a church it could be any nonprofit. in fact there are organizations um one of them is called the field in in new york another one is called fractured atlas and for a small subscription free ten dollars a year and an application that's all they do is they're a nonprofit and you run your grant through them that's a little outside of what we're talking about today, but I just want to give you a, a kind of overview of grants. So then there's um, the individual grants, which is what we're looking at now. And there's need-based grants and merit-based grants. Merit-based grants is a grant like the Guggenheim grant, which simply means um, send us your art and, of course, an application, some writing. And more or less, if they like your art, they like you, um, you get the grant. It's just that simple. It's not about needing the money. Um, it's not about even necessarily what it is that you're, you're you're doing. It's it's about the art. I think it's 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 good. So they give you the grant. Um, there's other grants that are community based. You know, uh, you have an idea for a community project. So then that grant is really based on, you know, how well does your grant um, interact with the community. And, and that's another type. And then the type we're talking about today is a need-based grant. And it's, it's, um, it's a grant that is based on how much you need it. Um, it's not that the people with the most need get the grants, but the grant is that for you're in a situation, you need a certain amount of money for a certain amount of things, and you're asking them for that money. And um, and that's what we're talking about today. Again, it's it's need a, a need based grant. Um, whoops, let me just move that off of here. Can you? Yeah. Um, so all right, um, I'm gonna go through this now. And and this this is uh, the grant we're talking about, the Pollock Krasner grant, of course. And the average grant is from 5,000 to 30,000. You know, it depends on your need and, and what you're asking for. Um, you'll get this slide deck afterwards, but just go right to their foundation. This, this is their page. This is the grant you're applying for. Um, the Pollock Krasner Foundation provides financial resources to emerging and established artists so that they can focus on their work. Funding can be used, this is really important, to create new work, acquire supplies, rent studio space, prepare for exhibitions, attend a residency, and offset living expenses. That's the grant we're working on. Their other grants are an organization grant that's about organizations that work with artists. The only way you could apply for that is the way I was describing. We're not talking about that today. Lee Krasner Award is uh, a grant in recognition of lifetime achievement. This award is by nomination only. You cannot apply to that. The Pollock Prize for Creativity honors an outstanding artist whose work embodies high creative standards and exemplifies the impact of art on individuals. Also nomination only. So today we're talking about this one. And when you go to this site, which you should do as soon as we're done, um, it'll begin explaining how to apply. Um, and I'll just begin to read this and and then we'll go into to winning grants. Pollock Krasner grants have enabled artists to create new work, purchase materials to pay for studio rent, as well as their personal expenses. Past recipients acknowledge their critical impact in allowing concentrated time for studio work and in preparing for exhibitions and professional opportunities. I mean, don't you want this grant? It's like they're, they're there for you, right? It's um, Artists can apply to them online with an online application. Requirements cons for consideration are application form, cover letter, a current resume, including an exhibition records, 10 digital images of current work with a corresponding identification list. All applications will be acknowledged and considered 
please do not send application forms by mail, fax, or email. Um, you have to apply online through this. And this is where you can um, this is where you can apply. Um, to go to one of the frequently asked questions, um, well, you know, which is what will I be required to submit with my application form um, was the main one. Here it is again, cover letter uh, stating for what specific purpose, personal and or medical, you require funds and in what amount. Indicate how the funds you seek will be used to advance your career and well-being as an artist. The letter and other materials must be completed in English. There's no length requirement for the cover letter. Make sure you are sending a final draft. Your name must be included and labeled the document this way, last name, cover letter. Then there's a resume. An artist statement is simply a one-page statement describing the 10 images you have included. Please be ensured. So that's kind of different than artist statement is, you know, kind of uh, something I, I talk about and write about endlessly, but it's it's the most sort of irritating piece of writing that artists are asked for. Like, what is it? You know, it's it's not clear to anybody what it is. You know, in 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 this instance, there is yet another version of what an artist statement is. Sometimes it's kind of like what's your, you know, contextualize yourself, right? That's the academic one. I also teach at, at the School of Visual Arts, SVA. That's their thesis class. And it's all about contextualization. Although, to be honest with you, I break all those rules and, and, and don't do that. Um, but that's typically what it's about. Contextualize your work in terms of history and what you're doing. And um, But this one is a one-page statement describing the 10 images. That's kind of clear, right? No philosophy there. Image identification is um, title, dimensions, et cetera, and that has to correspond to the list. And digital images is the only way to submit work. Um, and they give you exactly how to do this as a JPEG, and it must be exactly these dimensions. Um, I think I'm going to jump right into it. The grant restrictions, this is the other thing that's important. The foundation does not accept applications from commercial artists, graphic artists, video artists, performance artists, filmmakers, craft makers, or any artist whose work primarily falls into those categories. The foundation does not have an open photography grant program. It does not make grants for students or fund academic study, and it does not make grants to pay for past debts legal fees or personal travel really important there right in case um you are one of those things uh, so okay let's move on um here we go okay so let's look at two winning applications um I've linked to just where you can find them online, but I have them here on slides, so we'll go through it because someone described exactly how she did it, and and this is her description, and 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 also a little bit about what you just heard. Applying for a Polly Krasner grant was intimidating. Heather says there's almost no advice online. I couldn't find a sample cover letter anywhere. What I did find was anecdotal blog and forum posts where artists talked about having shared their letters and insight with other artists privately. But the useful part of the information was always left out. I think this secrecy reinforces the perception that it's an insider's world and discourages many artists from applying, which is why I've decided to share my experience online. How generous, right? I used to think that the Pollock Krasner Foundation only gave grants for financial emergencies. Sorry, everyone. I think Brainard got disconnected. We'll just wait for him to log back on if you don't mind waiting very quickly.
Cheers, Victoria, to coffee. And Melanie. Cheers. I just um, connected my <laughs> audio. Um, yeah, good luck to everybody. Let's apply and uh, make it all happen. I'll also just very quickly take this time to let everybody know that um, you will have access to the recorded session. Um, so I'll be sending a, a link with the file so you can go back and kind of like rewatch um, re the session with Brainerd. Hopefully he reconnects soon. Sorry about that, everybody. Technical difficulties. This is happening, no worry. Raymel, I think I saw you in one of the last Ulight meetups. Hello. Yeah, I believe that. Hello, Gloria. How are you? Good, good, good. Yeah. I never see you again. Did you did you get an email from me? Because Hansel so gave me a couple of names of, of black artists because I'm doing a Black History Month celebration when I wanted black artists to display. If not, do you mind shooting your email there and I can shoot you the information? Right now, yeah, for sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is. Thank you. So I don't see Ulight online. I don't see your name. I don't wanted to call you by your name, but I don't see your name on the thing. Sorry, um, my name is my name is Laura. I work Laura. with Laura. Yes. Quick question, Laura, because I tried to register for the fifty dollars and it, it just gave me an error. Is it is uh, were you guys waiting for people to see the workshop first? Um, you should be able to register if you'd like. You can, we can talk offline about it. Um. Okay. Uh, you can send a message in the chat and I'll directly, uh, let me just directly send send you my, my email. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I mean, for me, I'm sort of a, a mixed storyteller, mixed medium storyteller, including art, film, theater, and all sorts of stuff. So I don't know where I fall in this little category that he was talking about. Let me copy that. Oh, I think I, I think Brainerd I... just joined again, so we'll be able to continue. Sorry about that, everyone. What just what just happened? Um, that was odd. Do, do you know what happened? Was that on on your side or? No, oh, I I think you just um you disappeared from the Zoom, so I'm not sure what happened, but um let's let's continue. Okay, so where did I where did you guys last hear me? You heard this whole letter? That was the winning application? No. 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 We heard maybe the first the very first paragraph of you getting into it. Okay, so you saw her images and that they asked you for a cover letter. Okay. No, no we didn't no. see anything. Nothing. We saw yeah. we, we oh, saw you didn't her see way beginning. Yeah. You yeah. two images. Yeah, right. there, there. Yeah, where, no. it's, yeah. where it said, Brainard, where it said um, that applying for the grant is difficult. There's almost no information online. That's And then after that, you kind of disappeared. So maybe we can come oh, back. Oh, wow. To Sorry about that, you guys. I had no idea. Um, well, thankfully, this could be uh, edited together. So we <laughs> lose all of this. So, yeah, applying for a grant was intimidating. This is where you heard last, right? There's no advice online. I couldn't find a sample letter anywhere. 
And what I did find was anecdotal blog um, posts and formats and, um, and couldn't find a, a cover letter. What I did find, what, you know, were, yeah, forum posts where artists talked about having shared their letters and insights with other artists privately. Um, but the useful part was always left out. I think the secrecy, Heather's saying, yeah, reinforces my part. perception that it's no, an insider's, taking the, taking the off, dude. insider's world. Um, yeah, I know someone needs to be muted. Um, uh, okay. Um, so that's why she decided to share this on, online, right? And this is this is true, just to kind of paraphrase that first paragraph that people often feel that it's an insider's game. And that's why no information is shared. This is what got me into writing all the books that I've written to begin with. That 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 feeling that um, that it's that it's an insider's game. Um, I used to think that the Pollock Krasner grant only gave grants for financial emergencies. But while researching grants in general, I found examples of them being awarded to purchase equipment, prepare for an exhibit, or attend a residency. The foundation stipulates that the grants are for artists with demonstrable financial need, which I've updated my understanding to include working artists who are simply not independently wealthy. If, like me, you don't have a long, distinguished resume, it can be unnerving that the Pollock Krasner Foundation takes into consideration your professional exhibition history. The application form asks you to list 10 most recent solo and group shows, clearly stating that only exhibitions in professional gallery or museum spaces count. They don't even want to see jury shows in the list. So after I eliminated all the disqualified fluff from my 20 year exhibition history, I had seven shows and 10 group shows. I filled them in, leaving the last three spaces on the solo show list blank. But this is interesting. In addition to this list, they asked for a copy of your resume CV so the jury shows can get added back in, along with other grants, fellowships, or residencies, of which I had exactly zero. I got accepted to two residencies in the time between applying for and receiving the grant. The only notable thing I could add to my exhibition list was my inclusion in the Arden Embassies program, which she's making a note to apply, you can join their resi residency. But that's the single page she sent with her application. Um, I chose not to send an artist statement as that was marked optional. How wonderful, right? <laughs> um, to not have to submit an artist statement. It's not always the case. Uh, and I'm not sure they still mark that as optional. This, these are kind of things that keep changing. It's my feeling because I feel like the artist statement is, um, is such a problematic piece of writing that if you want to make it optional, please do that. She didn't submit it and won. I submitted these 10 images from my most recent works on paper. And after several unsuccessful attempts at photographing them, I used an Epson V37 to scan them in sections and stitch them together using ICE software. Poor image quality can make even the best work look so bad. So this is the most important thing to get right. I couldn't agree more. Um, it's the most important thing to get right. Uh, so let's look at her work. This is her work. Um, and the way she showed it, I put these little black borders on it because I'm not sure if she did or not. It looked like she didn't, but then the white just completely runs off onto the page. But this is her, her work that she scanned and stitched, right? The image quality looks good, no hot spots because it's scanned. The Pollock Krasner Foundation um, asks for a cover letter stating for what specific purpose, professional, personal, and or medical, you require funds and in what amount. Indicate how the funds you seek will be used to advance your artistic career and well-being as a creative artist. They also note that there is no length requirement for the letter. I decided to keep my letter short, clear, hyperbole free. This is what I sent. And this is pretty refreshing to read, I think. Dear Pollock, I mean, look how long that letter is. That's the toughest part. Thank you in advance for taking the time to review my application. I think a thank you at the beginning is great. I'm really into, into words like salutations, like dear. I start all my letters that way, but it's personal. 
I'm asking for a grant of 15,000 so that I can spend the next year working large scale. I would like to use inks, acrylics, and oils to make approximately 30 works on canvas. I would spend most of the money on materials, and a small amount would go towards my modest living expenses. I've spent most of my artistic career pragmatically working very small on paper and with inexpensive materials. This frugal attitude has served me well over the years, allowing me to spend most of my time focusing on my work. While I'm happy with what I've done so far, I think it's time to do something more substantial. This has not, it has not escaped my attention that careers are made with large scale works, and I'm ready to take both my career and my work to the next level. I am confident that the investment of time and materials spent on this project will have a dramatic effect on my creative process, my finished works, and my success as a working artist. Please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions or concern kind regards so you know this is obviously a winning letter you know which is why i'm showing it to you literally uh i i i think it's it's so important to recognize the lack of of, of jargon and academic talk here um again as someone who's currently faculty at sva teaching students how to write their thesis i'm a big fan of it being very very clear you know i think you're your grandmother or parents, friends who know nothing about art should be able to understand what you're doing by reading something about your work. And almost all statements um, don't fit that. You know, they become somehow self-referential in the art world. You have to know something in order to understand what this artist is talking about. But in this case, obviously, not only is it crystal clear, but she's not contextualizing herself in any way. She's not talking about influences. And I'm not saying you don't have to, but God, this is a simple letter. You know, this is straightforward. This is just, you know, I'd like to work bigger. I think working bigger is good for your career. I mean, wow. You know, that's that's really interesting. The form also requires you to supply the names and contacts of three people willing to write letters of reference on your behalf. Thankfully, they do not ask for the letters to be written until you have made it to that um, past the first review. The people I asked were, and these are good to know and good people, artist mentor who has known me since I was in college, a collector who is also an artist, and a curator I worked with. About six months after submitting the application, I received six months, right? I received an email stating that my application was under review with a request for more information. They asked, they, asked her copies, they asked for copies of my tax returns for the previous two years, a more detailed budget, and a projection of my other expenses and income for the following years, because this is need-based, right? They, this is also the time when they emailed my references to ask for letters. The time frame for submitting the new paperwork was approximately 10 weeks. I received the award by post two months later. So that's a total of eight months it took her to get the actual cash from submitting it. My husband and daughter were out for the day, so I was jumping up and down in my kitchen alone and trying not to post it on Facebook. I lasted at least 12 minutes. I couldn't concentrate on anything else, so I read as much as I could about the Paula Krasner Foundation. I listened to an interview with Charles Bergman, founding organizer and longtime champion of the foundation, in which he approximated that of the 10% of artists who survive the selections artist, artistic review, 90% are awarded grants. If I had known this earlier, I would have been more hopeful after receiving the request for information. I'm incredibly grateful to the Pollock Krasner Foundation for their support, um, generous support. I'm excited to share their message with other artists. The end of the award letter reads, we would be delighted if we, you, if you would not, if you would tell your artist colleagues of the foundation's aims to assist artists of merit who have financial need and to encourage them to apply to us. I hope this account encourages you to start your application today. Okay, and here's one more. Um, this letter is uh, a bit longer, but still not much more. I am a sculptor seeking a Pollock Krasner grant to fund professional work. The production of my work has been a continual financial strain and has landed me with credit card debt and no savings account. This is a hardship I have chosen for myself by committing to my practice, but I am hoping that this grant will help relieve some of this burden. 
I would like to spend 2020, 2021 creating an ambitious body of ceramic work for exhibition, and this grant will make it possible for it to happen. I am fortunate, the continuation of the letter, I am fortunate enough to have a full-time teaching position. But even with this, I struggle financially. I mean, that's such so, so important, right? Because I get asked this, but I'm a full-time teacher. I, I, I'm not, I, I don't really have that much need. Likely you do if you're a teacher almost anywhere, um, according to how they look at this. But even with this, I struggle financially because of school loan debt and debt due to studio practice. He's being specific. In the 2021 academic year, I will be on sabbatical. That means I will not be eligible for research money from the college. I will also be on two-thirds salary. It's important for the development of my work that I take this sabbatical year to focus solely on creative work. However, I expect the financial constraints will affect what I can do. I am working on curatorial project with Tiger Strikes Asteroid Greenville. Um, that's a collective. This grant will make it possible for me to devote my time to studio practice, the community-oriented gallery space, and curatorial projects. I am hoping that a Polly Krasner grant will make my work within my community possible. Now, next is his budget. But keep in mind, the last budget was included in her cover letter. It was so minimal. This is his budget. Studio, and it's fine to do this too. This is a winning letter, but look at the difference here, right? Part of the difficulty in the creation of my work is having a place to fire it. I am currently paying a woman in a neighborhood town for use of her kiln. I create the work in my studio and then have to transport it to get it um, fired. This is difficult and stressful with the fragility of the work, especially before it's fired. I have broken greenware in the process of transportation. This is a, There's a ceramic studio opening in North Charleston where I'll be able to have a studio and fire in the same building. Right now, I live paycheck to paycheck and cannot afford this studio. The rent is $300 a month. You know, it's, it's like the details of it, right? You, you know, kind of make it so clear how sincere he is. Materials, I use clay, glaze, oil paint, media. I would use this grant to purchase these supplies. The clay I use is Laguna B Mix. I use around 100 pounds a month of this clay. The cost per 25 pounds is 35.80 plus delivery. I'd like to budget 1,200 pounds of clay for a total of $1,700. My glaze use varies by project, but I spend 75 per month on glaze. I would like to budget 900 for glazes, my oil paint, Use runs on average 50 per month. I mean, really breaking it down, I would like to budget for 600 for oil paint. I will also budget for miscellaneous studio materials such as paint, glue, dust masks, etc. Shipping and transportation. It's professional expenses is shipping. In addition to shipping, rental vans, transport large work, gas costs, packing. It's important to exhibit work, yet the costs associated with exhibits become prohibitive. In 2019 alone, I have spent over 2000 on the transportation. I have an exhibit for the fall 2020 at the University of Southern Maine. This exhibition requires the production of new work and travel to Maine. I would like to have a display unit made for the work. I've done this in the past, but I'm hindered by cost and cannot be as ambitious as I would like. I have also residency scheduled, and this will be a six week period during which I'll make new work and interact with students. The university provides travel, studio and housing, but no stipend. I expect the shipping costs to get my work home after the residency will be around 3000. The grant will help me cover these costs. Documentation of work and applications. I have difficulty photographing the work, really important. This is critical. I would like to hire a professional so I can have high quality images of my work and goes into all that detail. Here's itemized costs. He's requesting a total of 19,000. But there it is, laid right out. Um, a Polly Krasner Foundation grant, the end of his letter, will have an immense impact on my studio practice and professional career. It will make it possible to focus on my current and create ambitious projects for exhibition. Without these funds, I will not be able to sustain my current practice. The assistance of a grant in 2020-21 will have a lasting impact on my practice by making these projects possible. The freedom it will give me to create without restraints is of a measurable value. And I, I always encourage this last line, thank you for considering my request for funds. Um, 
that's the slides I have. I want to talk to you guys now about this. Um, but that's really the very direct, um, the very direct process of how to apply for a grant, along with, of course, um, you know, exact examples. And, and those were varying examples, but this is not a difficult grant to apply to. I've um, worked with artists who applied to the Guggenheim, and that's a tough grant. That's a lot of writing, you know. There's um, a narrative that has to be three or four pages about your life as an artist. There's a statement of plans, which has to be two and a half pages. As you see, this could be quite minimal. It's really impressive. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, any questions here? I'm here to answer any questions as long as you want about anything. Reese is asking, I have my Pollock Grant grant letter nearly completed. It's long, but explains who I am as a person, my volunteerism, etc. Is it wise to be very personal in my letter? Um, well, I think I think it's I think it's wise to be as brief as possible. I think in both of those letters, people were being personal. I mean, when you start revealing like need and what you can't do and the struggles you're having because of money, that's pretty personal. Um, but I don't think you have to go into too much. You know, uh, I, I think it's important with grants like, like even the Guggenheim and other grants that I've worked on a lot, there are artists that, you know, the requirement is, I, I make it pretty minimal, one and a half to three and a half pages in these two documents. There are people that give me several pages that have applied to the grant before with 10 page documents. And I just think um, everybody's busy. So being being short is important. Being brief is important. Um, uh, but if I didn't answer any of these questions, Risa, um, or anybody else, feel free to ask them again or, or dig more for detail. How many grants do they give out? I don't know the exact number, but it's 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 a rolling grant, they call it. So they don't have 10 grants by the end of this time. It really depends on how much money they have to give out and how much they've given out. Um, there is no deadline for the Polly Krasner grant. So whenever you apply, it'll be whatever amount from then when they get to it, they'll give you the grant. Um, uh, what kind of art are they accepting? There was that was earlier in it, but they ex explain um, right in it. Let me see if that is um, this is it. The foundation does not accept applications from commercial artists, graphic artists, video artists, performance artists, filmmakers, craft bankers, or any artist whose work primarily falls into those categories. They do not have a photography grant program, and they do not fund uh, past debts or legal fees or personal travel. Um, so painters, you know, primarily painters, mixed media, sculptors is what they're looking for, um, is what they fund. Um, how does fiber art qualify or is it considered a craft? Um, that's a good question. I would, I would apply. I think you can argue that fiber art is sculpture. Um, that's, that's what I would say. Um, I don't think I don't think fiber art is considered a craft. I mean, I understand that 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 conversation, but um, it's sculpture. Um, they have a committee of, of jurors, and um, and they're likely not the same every year because, again, unlike most grants that have a deadline and that jury finishes, and then there's the next jury. This is this is a rolling deadline, so things are very fluid. They're always changing. Um, one thing that changes a lot that's really behind the scenes in grants is how much money they have to give away. They never say how much money they have, but I can tell you after the pandemic, they all had much, much more money. And, um, and I don't know the exact financial reasons for this, but basically they have endowments, right? They have, uh, you know, a certain amount set aside, uh, several million and and they give out grants that are from the interest on that money and for some reason people who had endowments and were in that kind of position seem to make a tremendous amount of money with 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 it so like for example the guggenheim and, and i haven't seen that impact um the poly krasner grant because they still have like a kind of range that they give it in 
but the Guggenheim used to always be 40,000, 40,000, 40,000 for like a decade. And suddenly they were giving different grants, 55, 75, 65. So they had more money. Um, I can see the second sample Amalia is asking uh, was an artist using ceramics at the application states, no craft. Um, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not craft. Um, I mean, that tells you it's not in that, in that case. Uh, ceramics doesn't have to be craft right there's different definitions of it so it's it's how you're talking about it approaching it and um and and discussing it you know it's 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 sculpture it's ceramics it's it's not a craft so um you have to be a u.s resident i believe you do or have a resident alien card um yeah the first thing is to understand if you qualify um you can write the foundation. It's really important in all of this to always, you know, write the foundation for questions. And this is not just this grant. I know a good amount about this. I've, I've, I've worked with artists applying for this grant, and I've worked on a lot of grants, the Rome Prize and the Guggenheim. But there's always questions that I can't answer, and that's partly because um, – Grants are changing all the time. They're always kind of tweaking and changing things. So do not hesitate to write to them directly and ask a question. They really want that because what they want is good applications, applications that work. Um, and so write to them and ask them um, about, about your question, if, the, if there is, if you have one about not being a U.S. resident or having a resident alien card or having an O visa or whatever it is, and, and they'll answer it, and, and then you'd know right away. Um, so, so yeah, would I be willing to read your letter? I'll tell you a little bit more about how the whole process of this is, is going to work. Um, uh, so let's see. Um, Printmaking absolutely would qualify. Does digital art qualify? Yeah, I would call it painting, though. Um, I wouldn't call it digital art. You know, a digital art is such an amazingly vague term. Um, like, what is that? You know, a uh, photograph of a painting is potentially digital art, right? So if you are, you look at a painter like David Hockney, who was using his iPad to make art for quite a while, that's painting. Right. Um, it's not he doesn't say now I'm making digital art. He says I'm using an iPad. I'm doing this, but it's it's painting. Um, I don't really think there is a digital art category. It's it's something, you know, it's it's um, it's a it's a it's too broad a category. It's like mixed media. There isn't really a definition of mixed media just to say what the media are that you're using. Um, if you work between sculpture and painting, should they be one or the other? Um Hi, Suzanne. Uh, it could be. I would. I would include both. It's your practice, right? You want funds for X, Y, and Z. Likely, it's not just for painting or just for sculpture. Your practice includes multiple things. In the art world now, um, uh, you know the the idea, the old school idea is that you have to have a consistent body of work, same medium. That no longer applies. Artists are consistently working all over the place. So that's okay. Yeah, printmaking, book arts, I would imagine, is is fine. Um, I think you can apply right away. How long can you apply again? I, that's a good question. I don't know exactly. You can um, write to them and ask. Um, I'm going to answer a few more questions and then get to Risa's question about, because that's more process of how the, how the course is going to work over the next three days. Um, I am a musician, photographer, Filmmaker, I understand I don't fit into the requirements, but would like to take the course solely for the skill of grant writing. Okay, great, Jose. Um, yeah, that's fine. Should your image be most recent and one image per year, the last 10 years? I would go with the most recent work. Go with what you feel passionate about, what you're excited about. Um, with the understanding that all grants have different needs, is there a generic takeaway that you can share that could apply to all grant writing? Yeah, Joshua, um, there are some. Be really clear. Be sincere. Be honest. Don't use any jargon that's coming, that's 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 like verboten now in the art world. Grant agencies are saying more and more, please, no jargon. Don't tell me what you're investigating. Don't tell me what your your intervention is. And, you know, that's not the artist's fault. That's the fault of 
art schools, um, again, which I teach at and am tasked with doing exactly that, <laughs> to, you know, giving students the jargon to write their thesis. Although I've also been told, try not to use too much jargon. <laughs> it's really like, like, you know, quite a scene. So I understand the idea of contextualizing your work, the importance of seeing it in history, but that doesn't always apply. You know, there are plenty of artists who are like outsider artists. Outsider artists are artists whose work comes from their head, right? Not from a particular format. An outsider artist doesn't necessarily mean that you haven't gone to art school. There are outsider artists who are exhibiting in the biggest outsider galleries who have been to RISD or another art institute and their work is all about UFOs or their work is about channeling entities. So, um, so yeah, the whole jargon thing is just really quite the, quite the puzzle, but best to be as straightforward, as clear as possible and writing the letter so that you know, your close older relative who has nothing to do with the arts would read it and say, wow, this sounds cool. This sounds good. You know, um, you shouldn't need a, a background in, in in art history or art to, to understand your application. What do they consider financial need? Um, well, it, you're the one that determines that. I mean, the two letters I showed you, one was a full-time professor. You know, there was financial need there. What are your expenses? You know, you have a big student loan debt. That's what he was saying. Um, you have, uh, you're trying to make work that you can't afford to work, make. Your studio is too expensive. Um, I don't think there's a cap on financial need. You know, they're really listening to artists. It's about, um, it's about, you know, what you decide you need. You're the artist. You're making the rules here. This is kind of an artist-run foundation. So, you know, that's that's partly why they're, the way they're looking at this, the way this is ongoing and the way you're given so much latitude to say what need is, is, you know, you decide what the need is. Um, they do not fund performance or they do fund visual art. Um but they do get fund for residency. So they'll give you funds for, they do, they, they didn't say they don't, um, they don't fund visual art. Let me read it to you again. I have it right here. They do not accept applications from commercial artists, graphic artists, video artists, performance artists, filmmakers, craft makers, or any artist whose work primarily falls into that category, including photography. Um, so, Painting, drawing, printmaking, bookmaking, sculpture is certainly all visual art. Um, if you if you don't have a formal exhibition record, you you can apply, but it's going to be a big help to have to have some exhibits under your belt for sure. the The first letter that I showed, um, they didn't have many exhibits at all over twenty years. Um, only three that ended up qualifying. So. Um, if you've had some, there has to be some exhibition history. Um, I want to clarify the requirement for receiving the refund of $50. Is it necessarily? No, it's, it, yeah, it's, you don't have to attend all the Zoom sessions, but you must submit it and show, you know, um, the confirmation you got from submitting it. The $50 isn't so much to keep you in this course. It's to be sure you submit the, the, the application because this is also, um, a psychological process, right? A grant is difficult on a number of levels. This is not such a difficult one as you've seen the writing broken down. But, you know, psychologically, what it means to get a grant, do you feel already that you're not going to get the grant because you don't get grants and it's too competitive? And those kind of inner voices, all that kind of nonsense, really, that can be completely debilitating to artists is... Um, why you're paying the deposit because I want you to submit this grant. Um, and a lot of people who think they're not going to get the grant, get the grant. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something I've done from doing this for a long time. Um, but yeah, so I, Laura's response to you also. Uh, okay. So then a little bit about how the workshop actually works. Do I read your letters? Do I edit them all? I don't edit them all or read them all. What, what I'm here to do and Laura is here to help with, and they'll, they'll be part of how it's working is you'll be partnered up with other people in this group and you'll be reading each other's and you'll be working on each other's grants, 
We'll also be using, you know, AI to help um, polish things when needed, grammar, things like that. Um, but the idea of this of this workshop isn't that, you know, Brainerd is going to do this grant for you. The idea is that you can use what's happening here to apply for any grant, that you don't need someone to read your grant and edit your grant. What you need to do is, you know, follow the application correctly and have at least one friend read the grant with you. So um, while, while I'm here for all questions, and Laura's also available for questions, um, and she'll be fielding a lot of the questions that are coming to me, uh, because what will happen is, as as questions come in, oh, you know, do you have to have a, a certain type of visa, or can you be a resident alien, things like that, you know, she's going to be documenting the answers to those questions, and so they can be answered, but... Um, but but yeah, that's ask any more questions about this at all. Um, okay, so let's see. Will this grant writing be only for this particular grant? Um, well, this application is, and what we're doing in this workshop is for this grant. Absolutely, we're using a real time example. But uh, what you're going to learn could be used for many grants, um, especially need based grants. Would this same process work for the Guggenheim? It's a little bit different for the Guggenheim. Would it work for the Rome Prize? It's a little bit different there. The Rome Prize, for example, wants to know exactly why you want to be in Rome. You know, you have to be clear about that, not just because I like Rome or it's cool. Um, the, the Guggenheim is a grant that's for pretty mature artists and, um, and they want to know about your mature history. Um, yeah, so so this workshop will help you for that. Um, if I pay the deposit and split the application as a musician composer, knowing it be rejected, will you receive the refund? Yes, you will, Jose. Absolutely. Um, you know, the refund is 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 <laughs> Laura. I like Laura says exactly. Uh, Laura's on it, um, and. Um, Okay, I was hoping to take this course to learn how to apply, but not for this one specifically. Well, that sounds good, Anna, but why not apply to this one while you're taking the course? Is there a reason why you don't want to apply to this one specifically? Um, okay, is it too late to sign up for the next three courses? It is not. This is really the introductory. Um, so many people who sign up will likely be seeing this as a recording. This is the introductory to help you understand the process of what this will be. Of course, we did break down the whole grant. Um, but but yeah, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, if you're an illustrator, Anna, right, that might not um, might not apply unless you reframed it and talked about it as painting. You know, that's it's so interesting with art. Like it's it's how you frame it makes a big difference, how you contextualize it, as they say in academia. Um, so it's possible. Um, what website do I recommend for searching visual art grants? Um, there's a lot. I have a blog that I post grants in all the time. And I'll put that here um, because I comb through all these other places. I'm looking for good grants and, and ones that. So here's mine, and you'll see a whole bunch right here. Um, and, and I try to pick ones that don't cost anything, you know, for sure, because there's all these kind of scams out there that charge you for shows and more. Um, so that's the website I recommend. Todd, could we say that we paint with words if we are writing? You could say that, Carol, but then you'd have to show images of you painting with words. Um, you know what I mean? They are visual, right? Uh, Gabriella, what was your concern? You're a video artist. Um, you don't want to apply to this one. That's okay. Um, what, what did, was there a concern that we didn't get? Um, please type it in again um, if there's something we missed. Do you have an alternative grant? Well, you can look at the list I just posted, right, which is here. Um, one alternative grant, if um, if you want to do a grant and pay for this and learn from this, is the Awesome Foundation. 
The Awesome Foundation is a grant, and, and again, this is all about the Paula Krasner, but just to make that kind of exception, if you want to do this, learn from this and apply to a different grant. Um, the Awesome Foundation is quite a simple grant. It's a grant that gives you $1,000, and um, and you just have to say why you have, well, what your cool idea is. Um, really simple, right, and wonderful. But it has to have some kind of interactive community component. Um, they want something that's, you know, that's going to happen. Not my cool idea is I'm going to make more work that's made with a 3D printer and it's going to do X, Y, and Z. They're not looking for an idea like that. They're looking for one that is somehow going to impact the public. It's somehow a performance would be good for that. Projected uh, art, things like that. Um, but but this 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 course and the next three and uh, and then the whole process is essentially focused on the Pollock Krasner grant. Um, if you're doing other grants, you could take this to learn that and um, and uh, you know, but it, it couldn't be any other grant. I would I would run that by Laura or me before that. The the awesome foundation is a grant that's that's that the group process of of working together and editing would work for. The the Guggenheim wouldn't. Um let's see. Uh, I'm a multidisciplinary artist, including photography. For this grant, I would like to apply as an environmental installation artist. Would that be eligible? Sounds like it. Yeah, sounds like it to me. Um, and you can also write to them and ask them that question uh, because they want, again, good applications. They want questions like that. But installation, absolutely. That's part of what's what's um, what's within their, their range. Um, can you recommend websites for film and audiovisual material creators? Two things happening there. Um, if it's film, you know, film is its own world, right? Um, festivals and all of that stuff. Uh, if it's video, you know, which is yet another world, video made by visual artists, that's another world. Um, audiovisual material creators. Uh, the the grant list I put of what I posted in there will cover a lot of that. Um, but troop of actors, I don't I don't know exactly how to. Um, I mean that's your handle there. I don't know exactly how to answer that because it depends what the film is and what kind of audiovisual material uh, it is. Do we have to generate the images of our work? Um, I don't understand the question, Francesca. Just try to uh, ask that again. Yeah. I mean, I assume you're the artist, and yeah, you know, I mean, you guys can speak up to unmike yourself. Um, but I assume you're the artist. You, you'd have to make that work. If you're an artist that has other people make their work, you know, like many famous painters are, that would be okay. But you're you are making the work, um, even if it's by direction. Is there a follow up process if you get the grant? Um, like what? What do you mean? If there's a it, it, oh, oh oh oh, do they do they follow up with you? No, not that I know of. They just want you to tell other people that you got the grant. Um, there used to be more follow up processes, including with a Guggenheim, where how you doing? Did you spend the money? Can we see? They don't do that anymore because typically artists were like running away from things like that. <laughs> there's stories of artists they get the grant. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you on that because they spent it all on rent. So that's why, um, yes, that's the list, uh, Maya. Um, oh, short films. Well, you know, short films, that's that's the whole film world. Then um, websites that cater to that, short film festivals is what you should be applying to in general, getting screenings everywhere. Um, I don't know uh, a website offhand. There's several, but, but that's a whole world in itself, right? Uh, submitting shorts for film festivals and, and having them screened. Um, yeah, so anything else? I think that's all the questions. If I miss someone, please ask it again. Post it in here. Unmic yourself if you want. Um, can it take place out of us, out of the USA? The Can what, your studio take place outside the USA, the work? Um, likely yes, but that's a good question for the grant um, to, to, to write to them. Again, it's I, I can't right. encourage more writing them. Um, I'm, I, I do a lot of these grants have done in the past with artists still do certain deadlines, especially the Guggenheim. And I think I'm a total expert at the Guggenheim, but I'm, I'm always telling people call them, 
Write to them. Miguel, Call. mírame a ver esto. Entonces, este va a ser, este, mira. Um, mira, venga, ven. Any other, any other questions on, on, on anything at all? Uh, uh, anything, I hope you guys take the class. Um, love to see you all there or who's involved. Um, yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, any other questions though? Happy to, happy to talk more about this and um, yeah. Thank you, Nicholas. Thanks, Brooke, Laura. Jennifer, Hello. Um, Dennis, Aaron, Rebecca, Terry, iPhone, Tonya, <laughs> Jean. Great. Um, I don't think Thank they you, do Brainerd. apply collaboratives. Sarah, you're so welcome. I don't think they do apply for uh, collaboratives, but that's a good question to ask them too. And uh, yeah, Jean, you will get a recording. Thank you're so welcome. All right, all. Can I ask a question? Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah. You have one